Hi everyone, my name is Rhiannon from Blue Dog Board Games and today we're going to carry on our Uwe Rosenberg solo series by doing a solo playthrough of a game called Nussfjord. Now this is a game about fish farming and we will be uh, building buildings in our little fishery area, um, attracting elders to help us with our fishing projects, building ships and trying to, at the end of the game, score as many points as possible. This is a one to five player game and we are going to just do the solo variant that comes in the box today. Uh, we're all set and ready to go, so let's get going. So we are all set up for our solo game of Nussfjord. Uh, it's basically set up exactly the same um, in a solo game and multiplayer game. In a solo game you do actually have access to a copy action um, like you do in a four player game. Um, it just because we will be using two different coloured meeples and um, we may be like blocking spaces so it just opens up the game a little bit more. Uh, this game is played over seven rounds so it's actually a really quick flowing game. You've only got three workers, you don't gain any more as the game goes on. Uh, so uh, it does actually flow really quickly. I've played it, I think the quickest time I played it is 22 minutes. My longest is about 35 minutes, depending on how much you're, you're thinking about your turns. So it should be a really speedy game once you sort of know what you're doing. So anyway, uh, let's get started with the first round of the game. So the first round, um, you always do a fishing phase in your rounds. So, and you follow this little sort of box here and it tells you exactly what you're doing. What we are doing um, in the fishing phase is taking in our haul. So we've got one little boat printed down here. This is our little harbour area and we're going to be buying boats if we want to and placing them in our harbour and that increases our haul size. So it's, it ranges from three all the way up to 12. So at the moment we've only got a tiny little fishing boat down the corner and our haul size is three. So we're going to take three fish from the supply. They're so cute. I <laughs> love the little fish meeples. Uh, and then we issue our fish according to um, the list in the fishing phase. So first of all, we add fish to any elders that we have coaxed into our project. The elders are all over here and we can um, coax them in at any point during the game. And then they sit at our banquet table ready to be served fish. But um, we don't have any at the moment. So then we do shares in foreign possession. Now in this game you have shares. Um, we have five different shares that are in our own player colour. I've got two shares of my own that are issued in the moment, they're in my personal supply, and three unissued shares. Unissued shares are worth minus one point at the end of the game. During the game you can issue a share to get gold and they sort of stay there until somebody buys the shares. Uh, so I don't actually have any shares in foreign possession at the moment because they will be in this space here. We then issue fish to your personal supply, so I have got two shares in my personal supply. And then the rest of my fish, up to a maximum of eight, go in my reserve. So my last one goes in the reserve. Any leftover, if you've already maximized or reached your maximum of eight, go into the general supply and they're essentially lost from the game. So you want to sort of avoid that if possible. Uh, so that is our fishing phase. We then proceed to the worker placement phase and we're gonna start with our yellow workers. Before we do that, however, the fish that are in our um, on our personal shares go into our personal supply. Any fish that would be issued on our foreign foreign issued shares go straight back into the general supply. So they are sort of lost, but we do manage to keep these fish. So let's think about what we want to do at the beginning of the game. The biggest number of points at the end of the game come from all of your buildings. So we've got A buildings down here and B buildings over here. Throughout the game we're going to get C buildings as well, which are worth a lot more points. Some of these are actually worth minus points. Um, so I'm just looking at sort of which ones are going to sort of bounce off each other. I really, really like the look of this worker's cottage. It's worth zero points, but it allows you to deforest an area, which will gain you wood, after you reforest an area. <laughs> so that's really quite cool. So I think I might work towards that and try and get a bit of an engine going. What I might actually do is, let's take an elder. So I'm gonna place my worker here and take an elder. It's actually take an elder and use him immediately. Um, you will see that there's one stacked here actually. Uh, you have a certain amount of elders according to how many players are in your game and some of them are all stacked on top of each other. You can't buy the or attract the one that's underneath the others until you've, you've revealed him essentially. Um, so I'm going to place him in this spot and then it says you may use him immediately. If you want to activate their ability, 
you have to serve them fish. And luckily I already have a fish that's already been served. It starts at the beginning of the game with one being served and you place them there. There's a maximum of three fish that they can hold at any one time. And then once three fish, you'll see later on in the game, but once we get to three fish, they will sort of jiggle about a bit. So I'm going to do the action. So remove one forest. I'm going to remove this one here. Plus one wood. And afterward, build a building. We've got a maximum of 12 wood that we can have in our supply. There's no limit to the number of fish that we can have. So I'm going to build this worker's cottage, which is gonna cost me the one wood that I've just gained, and I can place it in any free space on my board. So I'm definitely going to try and avoid the double spaces. So I'm gonna try and stick that up here. I'm then going to try and get stuff moving. So I'm going to start activating this after you reforest, deforest. So I'm gonna reforest, which is place two forests on a free double space. Now you, the double spaces are two adjacent empty spots on your board. So that's a double space, that one is, and that one is. So I can take two forests and um, you have to stack them on top of each other. So I think um, it doesn't really matter where they go at this point in time, I don't think. So I'm just gonna stick them back here. And then I'm going to deforest. So essentially that means I'm basically going there without a worker. So that's remove a forest. Uh, I'm actually going to take it from the middle bit, plus five wood. One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. <laughs> okay, and we've got one more worker. What do we want to do with that one? I am eyeing up this cold storage area. That could be really nice. That one is, we have three points at the end of the game. Elders with three fish. That's to do with um, what you act, what happens when you maximize their three fish on them. Usually uh, you get one in your supply and then the other two go back to the general supply. But this one means you get one into your personal supply, one into the general supply and you leave one on the elder. So actually you just build them up to three fish a lot quicker. So that could be quite nice. I don't have any money at the moment though. That one needs two coins. Um, after you issue a share, one gold to three wood and four fish. I don't have any gold still at the moment, but that could be quite nice to get lots of fish and wood. I'm actually going to issue a share. So what happens is I take one of my unissued shares and flip it to the sh issued side and I gain two gold. And that is the first round of the game. Uh, what we do now is uh, usually you would take back your workers, but because I'm playing solo, these workers block the space for a round, a bit like a feast for Odin. So I'm just gonna flip to round two and I'm going to be controlling my blue workers this round. So once again, we are back to the fishing phase. So my haul is still only three. I don't know why I'm getting wood. So I've got three fish. And then first of all, I have to give my fish to my elders. So he gets a fish. Then I have to put, share, um, put a fish on any shares in foreign possession. So that one goes up there. And then fish in uh, shares in personal supply. So I'm now out of fish. But that doesn't matter, you just have to like keep going down the list until you run out of fish, basically. Uh, so this one, unfortunately, is lost. This one comes into my personal supply. And then we can continue with placing our workers. So I am quite concerned if I'm honest with these shares up here. So I think before we worry about any other actions, I'm going to go to the copy space and copy this action is here. So I'm going to issue this share, gain two gold. And then with my next one, I'm going to go here, buy all shares. It's um, one gold per share, but if you're in the later rounds of the game, rounds four to five or six to seven, you get reductions in the cost because they're essentially worth a bit less as you're coming to the, when you're tying up your business. Um, so that's gonna cost me two coins, but I've now bought those shares and they are now here with me. Oh dear. So that basically means I'm gonna be giving him a fish and then all of my fish right now are gonna be coming to my personal supply instead of out into the wild. So um, I think 
I might try and get this cold storage because he's going to get a third fish next round and that means we're going to just start generating them a, lo a little bit quicker. That'd be really nice. Should I do that? That could be really good. I'm looking at the B ones and they're, they're not, I don't think they're really going to play into my plan because this is immediately two gold into your reserve. I'm hoping, I think, to not really increase my haul size that much. There's not really too many ship focused buildings or ship focused points and pathways here. Apart from this one, once your haul size is 12 plus four gold only once, but that needs an awful lot of fish to get going anyway. It'll be interesting when the sea buildings come out, they come out in round four, what their strengths are, because then I might change my pathway a little bit. I think I will go for the cold storage. So I'm gonna go on the builder building, grab the cold storage. It's gonna cost me two coins. That's all of my money. And pop that one somewhere. Let's stick it out the way over here. There's three points at the end of the game, which is quite nice. And then uh, we bring back our workers. So we bring back whatever workers are gonna be ready for the next round. We're on round three. Uh, our haul size is still only three. We're stuck at three. Maybe I should get another ship. It'd be nice to just increase that a little bit. Uh, so elders. And so this is where we trigger this for the first time. So he's got three fish on them. Usually it would be two back into the general supply and I get one in my personal supply, but because of my cold storage, it goes one into my supply, one into the general supply, and one fish remains on him, which is really cool. Uh, then it shares in my personal supply, so I issue two of them and they go straight into my personal supply. So I've got a nice six fish here now, which is actually quite good because, well, how much wood have I got? I've got five wood. I haven't got any money. What I think I might want to do is try and maybe get some more fish going. So even if I go for the sloop, they've got different names. This have got the sloop, which is the smallest one, the cutter, next one, and the schuna, which is that really huge one. I'm actually eyeing up this one as well, even though it's worth zero points. After each turn in which you remove one or two forests plus two fish, we could be really bouncing these two off each other. The worker's cottage after you reforest, deforest, and then I could be getting fish from that. So maybe I should actually look to do that. It's free as well. I wonder if maybe I could get an elder, but I don't have any fish up here. Maybe I should serve fish then. If I serve fish, so when you serve fish, you get a gold per served plate. So, um, and the number of fish that need to be served is actually at the top. So the first fish, first plate that you serve only needs one fish. So I put him there. If I want to serve the next plate, I need two fish. I think I might do that. Yeah, let's do that. One goes there, but one goes to the general supply. Basically, you don't want to block up all the board with excess fish. Shall I serve the next one as well? Go for it. I don't think I want to do anything with these fish right now. So that means I get three coins for that. Okay, then I was gonna take an elder. Um, was I going to take an elder? <laughs> um, was I going to take an elder? Yes, because I think what I might do is use him immediately. So uh, we start from the biggest plate onwards. So let's activate him. I'm going to build a building and I'm going to build the loggers pond and I'm going to stick that one here. After each turn in which you remove one or two forests plus two fish. So then I'm going to go to the reforest area, place two forests on a free double space. And then after you reforest, deforest. So I'm going to deforest, remove one forest plus five wood. So we need to be mindful of our maximum. So we've already got five, so we're now at 10. We've only got two wood left that we can keep hold of before the rest of it just has to go into the general supply. But that's fine. I think we're building up something a little bit here. Um, 
so now our blue workers need to come back and we're actually in round four so this is where this triggers place four C buildings in the display uh, so these are here unfortunately I've only got three spare spots the idea is I think that you just try and get this board moving and some turnover here so you can get those C buildings out because they're worth a lot more points at the end of the game than the A's and the B's and essentially I found that a lot of your points at the end of the game are where your, your buildings come in a lot more so than your ships and your boats so uh, let's have a look at what we've actually got here we've got boarding house which is five victory points if you have three or more B buildings. Unfortunately, we weren't focusing on the B buildings because they were a little bit not playing into our strengths. A renting service, three victory points, plus one victory point per ship on the supply board. Oh, we haven't got any ships yet, so that could be really interesting to, to go for. It's expensive. And the market tower, one victory point per set of fish, wood, gold in your supply. So I think I'm really eyeing up that renting service. And if I could get the sloop, or maybe I could get the cutter. Hang on, what would that give me? That would give me an extra fish. The sloop would allow me to go up to five, cutter allow me to go up to six. Maybe I should look at the cutter. Anyway, let's have a look at that in a minute. We are in the fishing phase. So we've only got three fish still. And unfortunately, I have to issue them here first to my elders and then shares and personal supply. So I've only got one fish this round, unless I start taking them from the reserve. I really want to increase my haul size now. So I think I'm going to go and get a cutter. And what's the easiest way to do that? I can, I do have the option of actually going here. Um, I can put a worker on a, an elder to actually do the action again. I do still have to serve him fish, but I don't know if I want to do that. Remove one forest plus one wood and afterward build a building. Maybe I could actually look to do that because I'm getting quite bulked out with forests. And I've just realised as well, I never actually took my two fish from my loggers pond. So technically I have three fish. Not that I know what I'm doing with this fish anyway. That's a really good thing to be aware of though, like I can really cycle this around. But is that, that beneficial for me right now? Okay, what I'm gonna do is go and build a ship. So I want a cutter. So that's gonna cost me six wood. One, two, three, four, five, six wood. And a coin. And I place that in my harbour. So my full size has now increased to six. I've doubled it. So that's pretty amazing. I think then I might go to copy an action. And I think what I might do is go and grab the forest manager. I think so and serve him some fish to use immediately, which allows me to remove two forests. So let's get rid of these top ones. And then I get five wood and a gold. One, two, three, four, five. So that's basically a free ship I essentially got near enough. So I've got lots of wood. I'm getting some money. So let's start getting some big points. I think I might try to go for the renting service next round because I've got the money for it, I've got the wood for it, and I'll have the fish for it at that point. So that will be good. I've done it again. After each turn in which you remove one or two forests, two fish, I'll keep them aside for now because it says after each turn. Is my whole turn placing my three workers or is it a turn by placing a worker? I'm assuming it's actually <laughs> my worker placement is my turn because in a multiplayer game you do call it a turn when you place your worker. I'm gonna then therefore I've got five fish. Um so I'm only one fish out then. I could transfer my reserve because you could go to this spot and then get all of 
all of your resources, whether that's fish, you can also get wood and gold in there as well. You can move them into your personal supply, but usually in the game you, you get a lot more there. So it's sort of a, I feel like it's a bit of a waste to go there. I don't really want to issue my last share now because then I'm going to have to give them a fish next turn. So I could potentially build that building, issue a share and buy back my share next time, which could be a good idea. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to build it now. So I'm going to place my work on here, which means I need to serve him fish. I'll do that in a second. Remove one forest. Plus one wood. And afterward, build a building. So I've got three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm going to build this building. So first of all, though, what I need to do is resolve him. So because he's got three, one goes over there, one stays on him, and I get the last one. And this is going to cost me six wood. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six fishies. One, two, three, four, five, six, and three coins. That's amazing. So I've got the renting service. Three victory points plus one victory point per ship on the supply board. And I've got loads on there. <laughs> and now, because I've removed a forest again, I get another two fish. Ah, uh, why am I putting my money in my fish supply? Who knows? Uh, so, uh, that is that action. So now we can take back our yellow workers. We are on round five. So let's get all of our fish. So we have got six fish now. Good haul, good haul. Uh, so these go on our elders. This triggers, but let's pop you there first. So you go into the supply, you come back to me, and then I issue them all to my personal shares. So they all come back to me as well. So I've got six fishies. Very nice, very nice. Um, and then let's think about what we wanna do. We need to get some more buildings going. We're on round five of seven. We've got loads of spare space. Uh, if you can see, these spare spaces are worth minus one points at the end of the game. So that's not good. I don't want them around. I also don't particularly want my unissued share there either. But we'll see. Um, we got some more C buildings coming out next round. Uh, I think I'm going to just try and look to see which ones are worth more. We've got this massive one. The Playhouse is worth 11 points. But the number of coins is... Um, for per the round in which you build the playhouse so as you go further into the game it's worth less and less because a coin is worth one point at the end of the game so it's also costing 15 fish which is a huge amount i've only got six um so that's probably just beyond my capabilities maybe i should focus on serving fish because that's going to gain me money also these are really good at sort of just doing these in a better way <laughs> And it will gain me more fish over time. So maybe I should focus on that. I don't know whether to issue this share or not. But I really want to get these buildings off because I want to open up the spaces. Next round we're going to be placing three C buildings. At the moment we're only going to be placing one. So if I serve fish, I can then activate this el elder by building building. And then hopefully I could maybe build another building. Yeah, let's let's do something like that. So let's serve serve fish. I'm gonna serve you. I'm gonna serve you. I don't know whether this is a good idea. Let's serve you. So that's three coins. And then um I want to build a building. I've got four wood and three coins. That C building is okay. One victory point per set of fish, wood, gold in your supply. I could sort of work that to my advantage. It may only be worth three at the end of the game. I have to really push my money up. Um, the next one, five victory points if you have three or more B 
buildings. Hmm, I don't know whether this is going to be good. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, okay, let's go for it. We're going to go here. We're going to take this elder, the pond builder. He's already got his pond, he's got a logger's pond. Pop in there, activate him immediately. Distribute four fish plus four fish per building. Uh, one fish per building, so four. <laughs> uh, as you would during the fishing phase. So I have to put one on there, one on there, but then that's three. One on there, one on that, that goes back and that comes here. Foreign possession, personal supply. So all four of these come back to me. Then I need to build a building now. And I think I'm going to go for this manufacture just on the sole reason that it's worth four points at the end of the game. So what's better for me to do? Um, I don't know whether it's better to go and do a build building or get a fish, build a ship or build a building. Um, it's probably better to cycle around my fish. So I'm going to build a building on here. Give him that fish. That goes back there. That comes back there gonna go for the manufacturer that's four wood three fishies and one coin there we go that allows me to basically uh, change up materials so one wood to go one fish or three fish to get two wood um, I'm not sure if I want to do that but I wanted it more for the points at the end of the game uh, so now we're gonna bring back our blue workers and then it says place three C buildings in the display. Unfortunately, we have not done enough again, so we can only get two out and about. And let's see what they are. We've got a harbor gate, which is six victory points. If your fishing track is fully covered, well, we're not gonna be getting that one. Oh, unfortunately, they are both really fishing uh, boat orientated. Immediately gain three gold if you can pay with a sloop, a cutter and a schooner. That could be quite nice. I've only got two rounds left though. I don't think I can get a sloop and a schooner. So I want to um, basically gain as many points as possible. I want to gain some more. I want to maybe look at this market tower. I wonder if I could get some more B buildings actually. If I got two more B buildings and got this boarding house that could be quite good but that one is useless to me that one could not be useless to me but it's only worth one maybe I should build these two and it's just I just need wood which could really bounce off with my with my workers cottage and my menu and my loggers pond Maybe we'll try that. Let's have a look at that then. I don't think I'm going to get much more money, you see. I think that's only going to be worth a couple of... There's only, it only costs two coins anyway, so if I do find that I'm, I'm gaining bits and pieces, that would be good. So let's go and reforest. So place two here. Then, after you reforest, deforest. So I gain five wood. One, two, three, four, five. And then in each turn, which you remove one or two forests, two fish. I have now got five wood. So let's go and I think, yeah, I think I'm actually going to go build a building now. I think. Oh, I don't know. Remove a forest plus one wood afterward build a building. <laughs> I 
Let's do that actually because I need to free up some space. Remove one forest. Plus one wood. Afterwards build a building. So I'm going to build this one for five, five wood. One, two, three, four, five. And put that here. Immediately two gold into your reserve. One more. I don't have enough wood now. Um, I wonder if I should copy the reforest action. Maybe, I think so. Let's do it. I'm gonna reforest again. Because I've reforested, I can deforest, gain five wood. Which means I've got six wood and because I've removed a forest, I gain two fish. Okay, I really want to get this out of my reserve. If it's in the reserve at the end of your of the game, it stays there. <laughs> I don't I don't think I've got enough actions now to do what I want to do, but we'll see what happens. Uh, so that is the end of that turn. We are on the final turn. So we're going to bring back our yellow workers and do our final fishing phase. So we're still on six. One, two, three, four, five. So they need to go to the elders, so you come straight back here, you go there, 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 and you give me one, Ooh. and then personal supply. Technically they go to the shares, but they then come back. So last round, we really want to buy, uh, we want to get this poor house, which means... If I serve fish and then activate, no, I haven't got time to serve fish. I'd have to build a building. And then what about this one? Do I have enough wood for all of that? Four, yes, I do have that as well. And then I would actually have this five victory points if you have three or more B buildings. So yeah, I could build a building and then build a building. Then I would still have one action left, which I could transfer my reserve to get the two coins out of there. Or it would actually be more beneficial for me to serve fish because I could serve one, two, three, four. Well, I'm gonna need three fish to, <laughs> to do that. Hmm. Um, how many wood? Ah, there we go. At any time, one wood, one fish. So let's do that, I think. Is it more beneficial for me to serve fish first, then? <laughs> I'm going to serve fish first, I think. I'm going to... Oh, this is going to go badly, isn't it? <laughs> if I have to do takey backsies, it's... Fine. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go for it with the last one there. So I gain, oh, it actually is only three fish, so I'm, I'm okay. I thought it was four, but it's not, it's four there. So I gained four coins for that. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to build a building by activating you, which you go there, and then you come here. And I'm going to build the poor house, which means I do that. Oh, see, no, I didn't want to serve the fish because now I don't have a action. I, I haven't got space. Okay, we're going to reverse that. We're going to reverse that. So you go back. Um, so what did I do? I think, oh, I can't remember now. <laughs> I can't remember now. Um, I'm on the yellow workers, so technically you were there. I took fish from you, I think. I think that's about right. And I didn't want to serve you. 
something like that. Basically, fish aren't worth anything at the end of the game. So I'm not overly worried about how many fish I have right now. I did not want to serve fish then. I'm going to go ahead and build a building. I'm not going to faff around. I'm going to build this, which allows me to move all fish from the banquet table to my supply. There aren't any. I'm doing it for another reason. Then I want to remove one forest. So I'm going to remove that, which gives me five wood. One, two, three, four, five, which means uh, in each turn you remove one or two forests, you gain two fish. And then I'm going to build a building. So I'm going to go here to build. Actually, I wonder what's worth more now. One victory point per set of... I could do that. That's only going to give me four points at the end of the game. Or that's going to give me five points at the end of the game. And there's nothing else I can do to manipulate that, is there? Okay, we're going to go for the boarding house then. So that's two wood, three fishies, and one coin. Um, I shouldn't have all of this money then, should I? So I should have four less. One, two, three, four. I had. I should have had two. And I think I then need to pay one. Oh, I'm very confused now. It doesn't matter. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> It'll only be one point here or there. And then that goes down. And that is all my workers. That's all my workers. So that triggers the end of the game. And um, we will go to final scoring. So scoring is actually really simple in this game. Basically, you are looking at your buildings and your ships on the board and then minusing any minus points. And that's, uh, it can be from buildings, but usually from spare spaces. So I've got three, uh, eight, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 23, 24, 25, minus one, so 24, uh, plus two for my ship, so 26. And then uh, per issued share, so um, 30, minus one, 29, plus one for my gold, 30. And that is it. There we go, 30. <laughs> so that's really easy. You just look at your, your buildings and um, gold is worth one at the end of the game. This is not, unfortunately, I could have tried to get this up my reserve because that's worth two points, but I didn't. And my unissued share was worth minus one points. Any issued shares are worth one. So yeah, 30 points, bang on. Um, it does say in the solo game that, um, I think, is it? Is it between 30 and 40 points? Yeah, good players score 30 to 40 points. So uh, not too bad. Uh, it's not my best score, I don't think. I was pushing in the top 30s just about. Um, but yeah, it's not like a super high scoring game or anything. So that's about average, it's pretty good. So not too too bad a play. I've probably, <laughs> you know, as, as I was taking back seats, I may have had actually 29 or 31, I'm not sure. but. For all intents and purposes, it is around about 30 points. So um, I'll let you be back in a minute and I'll let you know my final thoughts on Nusfjord. So sharing some final thoughts on Nusfjord. This is a game that has grown on me over time. So it's not actually that old to me in my collection. Um, I bought it maybe a couple of months ago now. Um, on the sole basis that I'm just trying to gain some more Uwe Rosenberg games into my collection because I had the idea that I wanted to do this series and this was one that um, I knew was quite popular from a solo perspective and I was like I need to sort of gain this one into my collection then and give it a go and sort of compare it to the others that I have and it's definitely grown on me initially uh, I was I was actually quite shocked at how short it was it's um you know, it's in a, a box the same size as most other sort of standard like Euro games. There's definitely a lot of components to it. There's a lot of boards and there's a few different moving parts to it. And so I was very shocked when it only lasted about 25 minutes. I was just like, is, is that it? I was a bit underwhelmed. I was a bit taken aback and, and wanting a bit more essentially. But now I've played it a bit more, I'm actually beginning to quite appreciate that aspect. This is a game that I can see myself getting out on the table 
maybe a bit more frequently than some of his other titles and I've now played this multiplayer as well um, over the weekend and my husband really enjoyed it as well I think because of the fact that it is so quick playing so there's less like pressure to like get things to the table and you know if you're not enjoying it or not really feeling it it's over and done with quite quickly and um, it even they, they've even thought about the uh, the deck size is quite nicely so you can actually play two two player games back to back or two player or solo because the the two player the solo game takes some um, two player setup mostly you can play two of those games back to back without having to reshuffle and reissue any of the cards just take them all off the board and re, re relay them all out and you've got enough a and b cards to uh, um, take you through two back to back games which is what i usually do i tend to play two games back to back so what I really like in this game is the, the interconnection between all of the buildings. So it's I find it quite exciting actually um, when you're first setting up a game and having a look at all of the powers of all the buildings that are coming out and seeing some little links and things that you can do to like ping off each other. Like you saw, even though I was atrocious at remembering, <laughs> but um, I had the, the reforest and then deforest action and then when I deforested it allowed me to gain fish. I love seeing those links and there's so many of them in this game. The game also comes with three decks of cards. So you've got three different um, fish types. So you've got your herring deck, your mackerel deck and your codfish deck. I haven't even played the codfish deck, I don't believe, or I might play with it once so far. And they all have different buildings and they all work differently. Uh, they're all very unique. They have different scoring um, victory points at the end of the game, all have different costs and powers. And so the variability and setup in this game is really quite impressive, especially when you think about um, the fact that you can play two games back to back and not even see the same cards. So that's essentially, um, with all three you could play six games back to back without seeing any of the same cards at all and that's before you even like shuffle them together and then get different combinations coming out so from that perspective alone i think i think it's really impressive and for such a quick playing game i really think that that works to its advantage i also really like in this game how simple the turn order is it literally prints the fishing phase for you on the board so you don't even have to remember anything you just look at the number next to your like ships, take the fish and then issue them exactly as it says in the order and then you're only worrying about three workers taking them back at the end of your turn and that's it. That's all you have to worry about. And so I, I love this game for its simplicity. It's so simple and I feel like, quite honestly, I, I may be able to introduce this to people that aren't otherwise gamers, even though it is on the surface, it looks like a very complicated big Euro game. Once you sort of have a look at what it's trying to do, it's so simple and the actions are so clear that I think that any worries would sort of clear up quite quickly once you get going. The complexity does of course come with all the buildings. There is a recommendation in the game for like a starter um, game and what deck of cards you should play. Uh, I haven't actually analyzed the decks close enough to understand if they're actually more simple in scoring and a bit more simple in the way they interact with other buildings so perhaps that's that's why um, but yeah I, I think that this is a very approachable game um, and a much more accessible title than say some of his other bigger box games like A Feast for Odin because that looks totally and utterly overwhelming and there is an awful lot going on in this and that game uh, but this one there there is a lot going on but it's it flows and it's quick and I think it's actually quite satisfying seeing all of those points add up at the end of the game when you know that you have built built all of those interlinking um, uh, built all those interlinking things into your buildings. After playing a multiplayer with my husband, um, I have sort of felt that the solo mode is slightly lacking in areas. So, for example, the shares I don't feel work as well in a single player game. Um, I do feel that you can sort of quickly issue all your shares in a solo game, buy them back really quickly, um, and that means you're therefore gaining not only money, you're therefore gaining much more control over your fish supply, um, and then that's just sort of a, a very easy and typical carved out path that you can just sort yourself out with very early in the game and then not worry about either fish or money for a little while. So I do think that's a little bit lacking I wish there was some sort of way that perhaps I don't know that the shares stayed there for two three rounds and then they were taken away from the board or something like that to simulate 
a player sort of getting in the way and buying your shares because that's what happens in a multiplayer game. You can issue them and then they are there for everyone to buy if they want them. And so um, I found that aspect a little bit lacking. I wish there was something else that happened which sort of prevented you from just going down that pathway. But I did it in this game as well. It's very tempting to do, to like, issue lots of shares and get that money um, and then just buy them straight back again. Uh, you know, it is a valid, valid play. It is a valid play pathway, but I just felt that it, it worked much better in a multiplayer game. I also find it slightly weird in this game how you can get away quite easily with actually small hall sizes. So I only built one ship in this game. I've actually gone through a game where I didn't build any ships and I actually got a very high score as, as well. Um, I find that a little bit weird. I feel like there should be a, like a greater push to encourage you to maybe build up your, your, um, your shipping size and your haul size because essentially What's a good shipping, what's a good fishing company when you're only bringing in six fish, whereas your neighbor could be bringing in 12 fish? Um, and funnily enough, my husband actually had a, a situation where he was bringing in so many fish, he didn't know what to do with them or he couldn't physically use them. And uh, there was nothing on the board to allow him to use them. So um, yeah, it's a bit, of a, a bit of a strange one. I do feel like it should sort of lean more heavily into the ship building and the, the fishing hall um, aspect, but it doesn't. Um, it's not really necessarily a negative, it was just a bit of a strange thematic choice, I think. And once again with this game, of course, it's absolutely beautiful. The artwork on, on all of the boards is just stunning. Um, the, the people look, you know, typically elder community. It looks very quaint, um, very, very thematic. Uh, I haven't actually noticed any of the like Uwe Rosenberg quirks. Maybe it's a different artist to his typical ones. I'm not actually very sure. Uh, usually on some of the player boards, they have like a little Easter egg of some sort. If you compare them one to the other, um, there, there are sort of like player color aspects that you can look at, but in terms of a tiny little diagram somewhere where it differs on one board, um, apart from the rest, I haven't noticed anything. So as I said, maybe it's a different artist, but. Yeah, the component quality is lovely. I love the meeples, um, the wood pieces are, are lovely as well. It looks very, very nice, very pretty. On top of all of that, what I really like in this game as well from the solo perspective is that there's actually two slightly different solo modes. So this is the round tracker for the game that I was playing. You can flip it over and then that allows you to bring out three sets of workers. And then um, you've got like two players that you're sort of simulating against. They're gonna be blocking more spaces. Um, so that would just change it up a little bit. I haven't actually played with that option yet. I'm going to try that one soon. So that's just quite nice to have a little variation of how you play solo. In addition, there is a little campaign mode as well. I haven't actually looked too much into it, but basically I think you play three games, one after the other, using the building cards of one deck. So you're basically going to be removing any cards that you have used in that first game and then that second game and then going to be using the remaining cards for your third or your second game, and then trying to score as many points as possible. It says your goal is to get a combined score of more than 100 victory points. So then I think that would be really, really fun to do as well. I haven't, haven't got the chance to do that yet, but I love it when they just build on the solo mode just that little bit more, just to push it that extra mile just to give it that um, replayability. And this one, I think, is probably one of the, the best Uwe Rosenberg games in terms of replayability. Not only is the, are the decks um, so variable and so exciting to bring out because that, that um, they, they will work so differently, but you've got the three decks on top of the, the variability in each individual one. And then on top of that, you've got a different variation of solo mode and then a campaign, a mini campaign that you can um, play on top of that so that's quite impressive. Having only seven rounds it can feel like quite a quick game um, which is obviously really good for the reasons I mentioned before but um, in it's only until round four and then round six of seven that you get those sea buildings that come out and that sometimes I can feel that that's a little bit of a letdown like in this one when in the final round of the game you only had the two I only had two cards coming out and they were both to do with hall size. So because I hadn't focused on building up my fleet of ships, they were basically useless to me. And that's where the big hitting points can be at the end of the game. So I do feel like if you had an extra, if maybe eight rounds, that would just allow you that, that extra time just to maybe build up your supply in the next round and then finally get that big, big scoring building in the last round. 
but essentially that's my own fault for not buying enough buildings and um, usually you would place three buildings in round six I only managed to place two so that obviously will sort of hinder me in the choice that I, I get out on the table so uh, that's, that's just one thing I found that sometimes the cards can sort of obviously skew in a certain direction and that's not where you're building up but you know that's the nature of these sorts of games so overall i really like nusfjord i think this is a really really fun game multiplayer is fantastic i've really enjoyed it i have not played it at more than two player um but solo as well is a really really rewarding experience i love how quick it is i love how simple the turn order is i love all the variability in the buildings that come out and i love the replayability I find this is a game that's just so easy to get to the table. Um, it's just quite exciting every time you play it. It feels fresh and new because you're seeing buildings and built combinations of buildings that are coming out each game that you haven't seen before. So that's in stark contrast to, say, uh, Fields of R, which I played. Uh, with my first game that I played in the Evo Rosenberg series, I felt in that game that the variability of each playthrough, you are playing the same game. There is no or very little variability. And so you very much got stuck in like one sort of route. This one, I don't feel like you get stuck in one route. I do sometimes feel that um, I can get encouraged to maybe stop thinking about the wider picture. Instead, just gain as many resources as possible. And then the next round, just buy the highest scoring building. And I have definitely felt that that is a tactic that does work. Um, but it's much more fun if you try and avoid that as possible and just plan plan your turns and uh, carve out your little pathway according to what, what buildings are coming out. So overall, yes, I would really highly recommend Nussfjord. I understand there is a big box coming later this year, I think, uh, which will include some um, expansions that I believe are out and about already and just sort of put it all in one place. I'm not sure if I would think about upgrading to that just because I think I this gives me enough <laughs> I think I don't know if I would want to explore expansions I'm not really an expansion person um so I think that this is a quite a satisfying experience um all in all anyway so that is it from me today thank you so much for watching my playthrough of Nussfjord I hope you enjoyed it and um, I hope you're enjoying the Uwe Rosenberg series so far if you enjoyed watching the playthrough today please subscribe to my channel and you will be let know of any future releases that I do otherwise have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you on the next playthrough Bye-bye.